guess what? I have some great news for you. Trump isn't racist. That's right. President Trump is not a racist. And I know you're looking at me and you're wondering, but how could that be? I mean, all the news and all the people and all the stuff on TV and the talking heads have told me that for the past three years that he's a racist. Well, guess what? He's not. And rather than me just tell you, I'm going to show you. So sit back and relax for the next few moments. And I'm going to pull these receipts up because you know that's what I do. And I'll be back. Why doesn't President Trump condemn racism? We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. About the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. His own words and actions tell you why. What are your views on the Ku Klux Klan and white supremacists? I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. I've been doing it now for two weeks. This is, you're probably about the 18th person that's asked me the question. There's a disgusting guy, puts a Ku Klux Klan hat on. He thinks he's cute. He's a disgusting guy. That is a disgusting guy. Really disgusting. He's a racist. Well, if Donald Trump is a white supremacist, he's a really bad one. A white supremacist wouldn't have freed Alice Johnson. And the day that I got the news that President Trump had granted my clemency and given me a second chance in life was the best day of my life. Would a racist white supremacist have posthumously pardoned boxer Jack Johnson, who was convicted of a racist crime, something Obama was supposed to do but didn't, among other things? In 1913, he was charged with taking his white girlfriend across state lines for immoral purposes. So we thank you so much. Yes. Surrounded by boxing stars who pushed for his pardon in the Oval Office, Donald Trump finally cleared his name. Well, on behalf of the White House, on behalf of the presidency, on behalf of this country, uh, our country is a great country, and we have done something today that was very important because we righted a wrong. It was a wrong, and a lot of people knew it. I knew it without being an expert on the subject. I knew it for a long time. Jack Johnson was not treated fairly, and we have corrected that. Would a racist white supremacist have deported a Nazi? But this morning, he's been deported to Germany at the direct order of President Trump. ABC News was there exclusively as ICE agents wheeled Yaqif Pauli from his New York home. Sir, are you a Nazi? You're watching a now frail 95-year-old man oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. finally being deported for his alleged role as an armed guard at a Nazi death camp in Poland decades after his alleged involvement. Sources tell ABC News the president became fixated on the case, ordering his new ambassador to Germany, Richard Grinnell, to make Polly's deportation a top priority after being sworn in. Signed the Prison Reform First Step Act, which no CBC Democrats voted for. President Trump today signed a sweeping criminal justice overhaul, which had rare bipartisan support. It shortens some drug sentences and expands rehabilitation programs for prisoners. As Jim Axelrod reports, it is all about second chances. How significant do you think this is? By the way, one of your partners in working on this yes. was Jared Kushner. Jared Kushner, whose, whose father went to prison and who, who fought mm -hmm. on this as hard as that. This is history. This is history. Right now, you're witnessing history on the floor of the U.S. Senate. Mr. Perdue, for, it is a Mr. Christmas Perdue. miracle underway Why? where, for the first time in a generation, Republicans and Democrats mm -hmm. are arm in arm tonight saying, we are sending Mr. too Moran. many people to prison. Mr. They're coming Moran. out bitter and not better. We want to make a tremendous difference. I want to mm -hmm. say... Uh, Hakeem Jeffries uh, on the left, Jared Kushner, and Donald Trump on the right have brought together a coalition like I've never seen. You've Mr. got Kennedy. literally uh, the National Association of Manufacturers, Fox News, and Sean Handy mm -hmm. on the same page with Nancy Pelosi, Cory Booker, uh, uh, the ACLU, Cut 50. Uh, something as beautiful is happening. And it's not that you have to see it to believe it. You have to believe it to see it. Made MLK's birthplace a national landmark. Here tonight, Bernice King is sharing her thoughts about President Trump's decision to redesignate the Martin Luther King Jr. National Historic Site as a National Historic Park. The president signed that bill on Monday aboard Air Force One after landing in Atlanta for the college football national championship. 
It is one of the highest designations within the National Park Service, and it comes just days before the holiday honoring Dr. King. Bernice King told 11 Alive the new designation further preserves the site's importance in Dr. King's legacy. Future generations is going to be significant because now we have this park where you come to visit this park named after Dr. King, and you're able to really take in um, the holistic aspect of, of his legacy. Bernice King says the new law is especially timely with the 50th anniversary of Dr. King's assassination approaching in April. Also making headlines tonight, the president signing off on a bill to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. right here in Georgia. The bill sponsored by Georgia Congressman John Lewis redesignates the Martin Luther King Jr. National Historic Site in the Sweet Auburn District as the Martin Luther King Jr. Historical Park. Representative Lewis released this statement, I am so proud that we were able to work in a bipartisan, bicameral manner to establish Georgia's first national historical park in Dr. King's name and legacy before what would be his 89th birthday and the 50th anniversary of his tragic assassination. He was pictured with Rosa Parks and Muhammad Ali. Uh, he wouldn't have sheltered Jennifer Hudson's family in his hotel after the tragedy that happened to her family. Um, he flew Nelson Mandela on his jet. He dated a biracial woman. And he's been hugged up with all of these people. Then you say, but what about Charlottesville? Oh, when he said this? We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And then I went on from there. Now, here's the thing as to, excuse me, excuse me. Take it nice and easy. You had some very bad people in that group, but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park. You're changing history, you're changing culture, and you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits, and with the helmets, and with the baseball bats. You, got a, you, had, a lot of bad, you had a lot of bad people in the other group, too. What about S-hole countries? Oh, you mean what a Democrat senator said he said about S-hole countries with no actual proof to back it up. Besides, any country that would kill me just because I'm gay is an S-hole in my book. Would a racist white supremacist promote the first black woman to Brigadier General? Would a racist white supremacist do an impromptu job interview of a black woman at a press conference? What are you looking for? What kind of a position? Come up here. Come here. She looks so smart and good. Do you mind if I do a job interview right now? We need good people. How are you? 
So what's your experience in front of the world? Uh, well, I design, I do wreaths, I do uh, all types of decorations. And you and like this building? Yeah, Okay. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. There's the man. Stand right over here. Oh my God. <laughs> if we can make a good deal in the salary, she's going to probably have a job, okay? All right, good. Have a good time. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. Good. Thank you. So nice. Really nice. I felt good about her. I tell you what, I looked at her. I said, she, you know, I have gut instinct, okay? And we're allowed to have that. And I looked at her, and she asked a question, and it was a very positive question. She looks like she's got a great look, and she's Look at that with the tears. How nice. She's just a good, she just seemed like a good person to me. Would a racist white supremacist adjust the hat of a black Marine? The president has returned to the U.S. This from just moments ago. You've got to come and watch this. This was actually a light moment. We just wanted to play it for you. Provide a little, a little relief as we are covering all this serious news. You see a, a Marine alongside Marine One lost his cap. The president goes to help put it back in it falls off again as he pats him on the side he goes and he grabs it again it's so windy obviously from the helicopter he's trying to right the ship here and help out the marine who's standing alongside would a racist white supremacist use his diplomatic power to get asap rocky out of jail in sweden on this asap rocky case uh asap rocky is uh a situation in Sweden. Sweden's a great country. Uh, they are friends of mine, uh, the leadership. Uh, and we are going to be calling. We'll be talking to them. We've already started. And uh, many, many members of the African-American community have called me, friends of mine, and said, could you help? So I personally don't know ASAP Rocky, but I can tell you that he has tremendous support from the African-American community in this country. And when I say African-American, I think I can really say from everybody in this country, because we're all one. I have been called by so many people asking me to help ASAP Rocky. Uh, actually, the one who knew about ASAP Rocky was our first lady, right? And she, she was telling me about, can you help ASAP Rocky? Uh, do you want to give a little statement on that? If you <laughs> well, we're working with State Department, and uh, we, we hope to get him home soon. Would a racist white supremacist invite 400 young black people to the White House for an exclusive reception to tell them, and I quote, each one of you, he's talking about black people, young black people, are playing an historic role in making America great again? I would know because I was there. Hey, hey. Here today fills me with an extraordinary confidence in America's future and the great, great future of our country. Each of you is taking part in the Young Black Leadership Summit, because you are true leaders on your campuses, in your churches, and in your communities. Amen. 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 Yeah. Leaders of the president also. Leaders of youth. Um, it's a uh, great summit. We, you and AP, where are you standing in the way? Yeah. yeah. white supremacist kissed the hand of an elderly black woman? We are honored to be joined today by the family 
of Detective Miocytes Familia. <laughs> Detective Familia was a proud member of the New York Police Department. So I promised I wouldn't tell you that she's 90 years old, but you know what? She is really something, right? You look like 55, maybe? 55? Huh? Boy, I'll tell you what. You got up those stairs better than I did. Thank you, sweetheart. And when that siren blares, when the squad car races down the street, when the police officer steps forth confident and proud and strong, so brave in that crisp blue uniform. We will think of you. We will think of your incredible daughter. We will be thinking of her. We will be thinking of all of the heroes we lost. And we will thank God for the men and women of law enforcement. And even after all the disrespect from ungrateful race hustling punks like Colin Kaepernick, Donald Trump still offered to look into getting pardons for anyone in the NFL who felt as though they had people in jail unfairly. Now, would a racist white supremacist do that? Today, President Trump called on athletes who kneel during the national anthem to recommend people they think he should pardon. I'm going to ask them to recommend to me people that were unfairly treated, friends of theirs or people that they know about, and I'm going to take a look at those applications, and if I find, and my committee finds that they're unfairly treated, then we will pardon them or at least let them out. The president's latest pardon came on Wednesday when he commuted the sentence of Alice Johnson. The Tennessee grandmother served more than 20 years in prison for a first-time nonviolent drug offense. So I know what you're thinking. Trump's doing these things, you know, so he can look good for a photo op, as they say, to get the black vote. But let me tell you something. Donald Trump and Republicans actually don't need the black vote. He didn't need the black vote in 2016, and he really doesn't need it in 2020. I would say vast majority, probably 90 percent and even higher of black people in this country live in deep blue urban districts that a Republican really wouldn't win anyway. So unless you're a black person in some battleground county somewhere, it's really not going to make much of a difference. And it really wouldn't be it really makes no electoral sense to him to go out of the way to do this, all this stuff that he's done just for electoral points. These are things he'd be doing out of the goodness of his heart. He really doesn't have to. It really doesn't do anything for him electorally have done all these things that I've listed. He's just not a bad person. He's just really not the racist that you want him to be. Now, there are plenty of reasons why people on the left wouldn't like Donald Trump. I mean, they don't like safety, security, the military, energy independence, and things like that. And those are perfectly valid reasons not to like Donald Trump. But racism is no longer one. So now you've seen the video. You can't erase it and you can no longer live a lie. You should like this video, subscribe to my channel, and let me know how you feel in the comments. And if you really love it, I mean really love it, be sure to donate. All donation links are in the description of my video. Your donations go toward me making more videos like this and getting more of the truth out there. Until next time, remember Benji's three Ps, practicality, patriotism, pragmatism. The most important of these three being pragmatism. Thanks so much, you guys. God bless. Until next time.